It's Thursday morning and we are on our way into Ketchikan. It's about 6.30 in the morning and we're not supposed to officially be there until 11. if the sunshine comes out. And it's still beautiful even if the sun doesn't come out. There's a ship tucked around there. This is the further away dock. This is the one that you have to take a shuttle to get into town. I'm not sure what ship it is. Just looking around out here on the rib boats. Yeah, I think that's a Norwegian ship over there. Here, I'll zoom in. I think it is, and I know that Norwegian was taking out a lease on that dock. So, they're building the dock for like 20 years. So, that's where they're docking. So, it's fun to see that. I just wanted to show you here is the main part of town right here where you see Holland America and two princess ships and I did the video my other video shows that it's clear down here and around the corner where the other like the Norwegian that we passed so just a heads up if you book on that you're gonna have to ride a shuttle into town so I feel bad that that's gonna take some of your time here in port There's our majestic princess right there. This is where we came in last year. Let's see, it's just 10 after 11. And I'm supposed to meet down here at 12.15. So if you're doing the Misty Fjords, this is the boat. This is what we did last year. And it wasn't near as good as when we did it in 2017. But it's okay, if you haven't been there, it's beautiful, it's a good thing to see. So, so, just wanted to show you, if you need an accessible thing, this is a little bit harder. I asked what they do, and they said, oh, we'll help you. I don't know what that is. So, just thought I would show this to y'all. Okay, here's the Koningsdam, and down there is the Crown Princess. And right here is where you can sign up for lots of different excursions, just right here at the port. It's cheaper. They've got all of these. They've got the seaplane, the Bering Sea Crab Fisherman's Tour, adventure carts, the planes, Rainforest Sanctuary, Misty Fjords. So I just thought I'd point that out to you. And you're right here in the central part of town. Here's some more places to book tours. Okay. Here with Norm all my place for the 11:30. Follow me. 
Here's everybody ready to pick up people here. <clears throat> it's a nice map of downtown if you need to get your bearings. Hey, take our picture, lady. Hi. Oh, look! <laughs> <laughs> and this is the Viking Orion. She's just nestled right up here and she's got a gentle slope there as well for people to get off. So I think that's really nice. same place that we came in and so I just I'm a little bit worried about my people here my family members who have accessibility problems so here on the Koning Stom there's lots of steps to go down those teeny little steps and a couple of big ones at the end in order to be able to get off the ship and then when you get over here then you've got this you can climb to come to get up here and over here on the Majestic Princess, I think it is easier. I don't think there's the long incline. I remember last year there was not an incline like that. There was a little bit to go up to get back on this ship, but it was nothing like this. I'm gonna walk here just a little bit. walking over here to meet my group to go on the excursion. There are lots of tours here and they are much cheaper. And you know, the thing is too, you have to remember is that a lot of these tours you buy here, you're on them with people from the ship. So keep that in mind that they're gonna be back here anyway in time. So, and those of you who end up booking with me, I can, help you pick excursions there's a company that we use a lot that have the guarantee they'll have you back to the ship on time and they are much cheaper than the cruise ship excursions usually you're on with a lot of the people on the ex cruise ship but also if you're not back in time they'll give you $500 plus they will get you to the next port so they do a really good job and I've never heard of anybody missing so I just wanted to let you know about that but anyway here we are 
looking for my group here. Oh, here's mine over here. restrooms here if you need. I think we actually matched our um, population of 8,000 wow. today. Yeah. You know, the Bliss had almost 2,000 people get off wow. out of the So, yeah, it's been a crazy day. They just, they just got back to their shuttle. They were supposed to be on board by 11. And we just dropped the last ones off at quarter after 12 wow. <laughs> but the ship waited for them so you know that's a good thing it is <laughs> it's it gets crazy it does get crazy but we like it it's a lot of fun once I get off this dock I'll turn the air conditioning on if I turn it on now it'll blow dirt and dust up in their faces and well, the harbor guys, they don't like that very much. Usually I don't care, but they're pretty nice to me. They get me out there. Get your move, 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 they have a, there was a blackbird who flew down to the, I was stopped at a stoplight, he flew down to the curb, he waited for the light, he walked across the street, <laughs> and we didn't think he was going to make the light because we saw that it was going to turn yellow, we were afraid he wouldn't make it, but everybody just was staring at him, and as soon as the light changed, he hopped up on the curb and flew away. <laughs> Stupidest thing I ever saw. It was so much fun. Everybody at the stoplight had a good laugh over it. Oh, look at this guy flying. Yeah. <laughs> this is our giant downtown. Are we getting a neat air seat out of the air? Not much, are we? I guess it's on. I can hear them <coughs> fan a little bit. This is our giant downtown. All what eight street, eight blocks of it are rock, are welcome to catch a can sign, and our sunshine gauge. We're almost there for our 13 feet of rain this year. Wow! So we do have a lot of rain. Most of the time, we wear rubber boots and a rubber rain coat and a hat because it's wet here. It's nice and rocky. There's not a lot of clay here on the island, so it doesn't get gooey. It just comes down and runs out to the ocean. It doesn't even stick around on the trees and things very much. We're so rocky that we don't have much topsoil. So there's a totem pole there. We're famous for our totem pole. The totem pole in front of us is Fog Woman. There's a raven at the top, the figure at the bottom holding the two fish is Fog Woman. She sends her daughter every year to bring the salmon. And that's a legend, a Tlingit legend. Mm -hmm. Probably the only pink federal building in the States. <laughs> it's next to us. And to your left, we're going to go across the bridge. This will be Creek Street. If you get a chance yeah. to take a walk down it, I don't know what time oh, you're is it? time your olive aboard is. Midlands. It's about two blocks long, Midlands. so it's not a long walk, but it's really interesting. And we're coming up on a street. It's off to the left. It's called Totem Road, and it has a collection of totem poles. In fact, this totem park park has the most totem poles anywhere in the world okay. in one place. I can't stop because of the traffic behind me. But some of the people's nest up here. The majority
majority of those poles are replicas. There's only one original pole, and it was actually carved in place. And that was the Chief Evans pole. That was about a 50-foot pole. But it fell down because it eventually rotted. But all the rest of them are replicas of poles that were carved and stood on other islands. So they replicated them for that part. We're working on our bridge down here. This is called Herring Cove. As we cross it, look out. This is a favorite haunt of the eagles. They like it. You might see a sea lion out in the water. They like it too. And as I said, the fish are starting to head upstream. We had a record rainfall in January, February. There were days on end it never stopped. See what we've got. If we've got anything, I see eagles on the on the trees over there. There at the water. on your screens here. These were comprised of cedar rods tied down to netting and chicken wire. And how they worked, the schools of fish would bump these nets and they drove around until they found a small opening. You'll see that opening on the bottom of the screen here. From then on, they'd work their way into the fish trap and be stuck, awaiting a cannery worker to come by and bump in a bar. You think that these fish take them back to the canneries to be shipped and process. As we do slowly make our way past this cannery, you guys are more than welcome to open up your windows and take pictures. Uh, along with that, I'll be opening up this door up back. If you guys would like to do some topology in that up back, you can do that as well. This eagle will probably follow us all the way to the nest. Now when looking for this eagle's nest, do keep your eyes peeled at the tops of the tree lines. It's going to look like a black hair hole at the top of it. I'm going to show you what, it, what this looks like. We do have a picture of that exact eagle's nest up on your screens here. So that's what you're going to want to be looking for once we do finally get in the view of this eagle's nest. Uh, 
platform known as Mahoney Falls. We have three or four volunteers on board that like to assist me in pulling this pot. There's one, two, three. And we'll just form an assembly line, uh, kind of wrap around the side of the table so we'll kind of squeeze in somewhere. Now uh, for the people in the front, I do want to inform you, you guys are in the splash zone. Along with that, uh, if you guys look real closely here, and observe what they're doing you can see that they're working very hard and I can just kind of hang out with her over here <laughs> uh, so it's about 80 feet in this area that rope in particular is 120 feet long so you're pulling up 120 feet one of the other reasons I have them do this we don't get crab on board right whose fault is it <laughs> but if we get crab on board I take all the credit. Oh yeah. We got two keepers. Oh yeah. All right, thank you guys very much. Yeah. I got it from here. Thank you, sir. Well, look at what I pulled us up. <laughs> As you can see, we got two big ones in here. Uh, I'll get into that in just one moment, but uh, 
as you can see we have two of them in here uh, so we have three or four of these tours a day so if one pot doesn't have anything in it we'll pull another one another one now uh, you wouldn't believe how many crab we had in here before when I pulled this pot up for the last tour <laughs> Because uh, some most of the guys are uh, under that legal limit of six and a half inches, and when we drop this pot back in the water, they actually all just float around, and they can kind of swim in the water, so they'll make their ways out of these holes. So I'm guessing that's what happened. But as you can see, we kept the big ones because they couldn't make their way out. Uh, so just real quick, how this pot works: we have an entrance on the right here and one on the left. These are for crabs to crawl in. These little gates will close behind them. Along with that, like I said, ring escape hatch here and one here as well for crabs under the legal limit of six and a half inches to escape. Now uh, this little white piece of rope at the end of this hook here is what we call rotten cotton. It's a safety net for us more or less if we're ever to lose this pot under any circumstance to a storm to a boat cutting our line. After this rotten cotton sits in the ocean for two weeks it'll actually dissolve causing this pot to open up here freeing the crab. And this is our bait bag here. So here in Alaska, you do have to use locally caught bait. So we have a salmon out in here. Pretty sweet. And salmon is one of their favorite types of meals for good reason. talked about this. <laughs> I got a pretty good question during my last tour. They're like, at what age do they let you Alaskans and start holding these Dungeness crap? <laughs> <laughs> and what did you say? I said, as soon as I was born. <laughs> Yes, he is very crabby. All right, so if you look at where my thumbs are on both sides of them, you guys are gonna see it's on their abdominal flap. Yeah. How it's long and skinny, these are males. Yeah. Like I said, sometimes we don't get females as well, so that's why I, got, I showed you guys that picture. So how do you, do you have a special way to hold them? Uh, yeah. Nice and tight, yeah. right here and right there. Yeah. And I'll show everyone. This is the Alaskan way to hold a Dungeness crab. If you hold them like this, these guys can't pinch you. Sometimes they do tend to fight like this guy is right here. Do remember, you are stronger than the crab. They will uh, somewhat give up after a little while. <laughs> Now, uh, she asked, what do I do now? Yeah. Uh, that's the thing, you can't really do anything. As you can see, she left her phone over here for me to look through. Uh, she's kind of preoccupied right now. I can yeah, take her go, phone, I can take I some pictures. Some pictures of you. <laughs> no. and some good pictures of you holding the crab. She got some cars in here too. Yeah. You know, If you get the right angles on these guys, you can make that crab look huge though. Now give him a kiss. <laughs> this was our boat, and this is another boat, just like it. it's just green. I'm going to tell you the story about this house where we're going to eat. Beautiful it is. We're gonna separate the crabs, the, the crab legs at the top right there. And at the top of each leg, we have our chest meat, and that's surrounded by a, a film that you need. It's a soft shell, and that's how you're gonna eat it. You're gonna peel off this soft shell around the sides, and you can either dip that directly into your butter. Um, what we call an Alaskan lollipop, or you can just pull out all of that meat. As you, as you can see, there's quite a bit here. 
On the next section, sec uh, segment down, it's going to break down the joint. And at the bottom of this, it has an upside down white B. Does everybody see that? You're going to stick the first prong of your dinner fork in about halfway up. Um, you want to put it in halfway so you have a little leverage. Um, you're going to pull this up like you're opening an envelope. Woo, sorry. <laughs> you're in the splash zone. So. There you go. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. How is it? Mm. Yes. Excellent. And how is the crab? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So all the rest of this, you're just going to break them at the joints. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. You can just get in there and break it like that. Sometimes the meat's going to come out uh, all in one big piece like that, which is very satisfying. Um, if not, we don't have cocktail forks here at the Georgia Lodge. Lodge. We have this guy. You can use that to just pull or dig out any of your meat. All right, so on the second leg, another lollipop, followed by another white bee. And here we come to the crab claw. Just be careful, this, uh, this part right here is very pointy and can be sharp, so please be careful. So on the claw, on the bottom, we have our stationary piece, and at the top, we have our moving piece. You can pull up on the moving piece, that loosens up the flesh inside the claw. Now if you look in the center of your tables, you have your bowls for your shells and your red crab crackers. You're gonna take your crab, crab claw and lay it in the, claw, in the cracker flatly, like that. Give it a gentle squeeze. This guy is juicy. <laughs> I'm gonna smell so often, awesome after my shift today. <laughs> All right, and then you got another nice big piece of crab in there. Um, if you have any, if you need any help or have any questions, you can call me or Alyssa at Crab 911. <laughs> we're both certified crab crackers, and we're about to get you started right now. Sure. Yeah, there's a few in the trays. Wait, wait for fish and then. Then I'd walk around for a few minutes. I highly recommend the excursion I did. It was really, really wonderful. Majestic Princess left. I'm glad I caught her. Oh, look, it's the Bering Sea. See the Lucian Ballad right there? The Bering Sea Crab Excursion Fisherman's Tour. So it shows. And here's our cunning stone. She sure is a beautiful ship, isn't she? 
So maybe we'll just walk along here a little bit. all the way down here so this would be closer to where the majestic princess of course was docked right here right behind the coning stop so I'm just walking along here bearing off queen fishing boats and rib boats it's really fun to see isn't it and there's that bearing sea crab fisherman tour right there the Lucian Bella that's a fun name Look, it's kind of fun to put their trash cans. www.alaskatourjobs.com Paid CDL training, cruise benefits, questions, call 228-1700 and it's Princess Cruises in Holland America. I'm going to zoom in if anybody needs to know that. There you can see the whole thing at once. Just beautiful, isn't it? I should say she. Ships are she's. It's just beautiful. Okay, we're walking back now. just very nice out. It's slightly cool. Not cold though. It's just been a lovely day. 